Hey guys, it's Gazi here. Hope you're all enjoying the new patch like I am. Today we're going to talk about the mechanics of Xuanzu Palace, some tips and pointers that will hopefully make your raid experience easier. Let's roll the clips. The first boss of Xuanzu Palace is Shi Dao. After his long rant, he will begin the fight right away. The first skill that he does is a wave of sword energy shown by a red rectangular indicator. This skill does not lock upon any targets and can be easily dodged. He will also do a charging animation and throw an explosion dot on a random target that is not the tank. Players hit by this dot must leave the crowd and be topped off right away. Failing to do so will cause an AoE damage that does roughly 50% of your HP to teammates around you. After announcing Bodyguards of the Sword Formation, Shi Dao will summon an AoE of swords around his body, constantly dealing damage to targets around him. When this skill is up, the tank must kite the boss and move him around the edges of the map. Melee damage dealers must be wary of the spell to not take too much damage and put pressure on your healers. When Shi Dao holds his swords in front of him, he will do a wave of qi, applying the talisman of slowing debuff. The debuff greatly slows down your movement speed and haste, making it difficult to cast spells and your cooldowns become significantly higher. The healers must purge the debuff from the tank right away, otherwise the tank may have a hard time kiting the boss. The debuff only lasts 8 seconds, so if you are a DPS and didn't get purged, just hold your spells until the debuff goes away. If you are a bard healer, make sure you purge yourself first before casting your AoE purge. Failing to do so will put your AoE purge on cooldown for 5 minutes. Hitting 1 HP will end phase 1 of the boss and start a long conversation between the NPCs. You may continue to hit the boss during this time to keep your buffs and resources up or take this time to stretch and relax. I chose to go close and admire the beautiful female fox NPC. Should you unfortunately wipe in phase 2, you may come back with your team and resume the fight from this point. At the start of phase 2, the fox Bison Yu Zhao will spawn, sharing HP with Shi Dao. The fox will always remain in the center of the map and aggro does not apply. The tank must again kite Shi Dao and pull him away from the fox. The fox will randomly target one player on the map shown by a red arrow indicator then spawn a pool of fire at the target location. Fire is bad. She will also do an AoE around melee targets near her, shown by a red circular indicator. The third spell that the fox does is a fan of fire. Fire is bad. The one thing that other players must pay attention to is try not to drop the fire in the direction of which the tank is kiting Shi Dao. And of course, get the hell out of the tank's way. Dodge these fireballs as well guys, fire is bad. Upon recovering from the golden body break, the fox will summon a damage reflecting armor with a really cool name. All DPS must switch targets to Shi Dao at this point, then continue to hit the fox once the shield is down. This boss is an introduction to the raid and I didn't find it too difficult. As long as you are not too greedy standing in one place fixating on doing DPS, the boss really offers no kill threats. The second boss of Xuanzhou Palace is Dante Daoist and his Dark and Fire Slaves. At the start of the fight, the tank should kite the fire slave away from the crowd and continue to do so for the entire fight. The fire slave is the only one amongst the three with aggro and places a stacking dot onto the tank. The dot doesn't do that much damage even 10 stacks, but the tank should go clear the dot by stepping on the black poles around the map. The fireball spell casted by the undead Taoist does more damage the more stacks you have. Be careful to not pull the fire slave onto the black poles as he will do the AoE that does about 50% damage of the entire race HP upon touching the black pole three times. The dark slave will randomly target a member of the raid indicated with a red arrow, constantly spawning a black pole every three seconds under the target. It is important to drop these poles away from the crowd to avoid chaos in the fights. He will also cast the explosion spell and ring down black poles. When this happens, Billy DPS should hug the Dark Slave while the ranged DPS pull away. The Dark Slave once again does not have aggro and will randomly teleport around the map every 30 seconds. The Undead Taoist will constantly cast small purple balls at random targets and bounce them between members within 7 meters, so keeping a distance from each other is a given. When he announces charred bones, he will summon a big purple ball and smash it at a random target, dealing damage and commence the Dark Slave to target you with the Black Bull spell. The last thing that the Taoist does is the Devastator's protection, summoning a shield, protecting him from most of the damage dealt. When this happens, just simply switch targets to the other slaves. This fight isn't too complicated for DPS and healers as long as they remain 7 meters from each other and drops black holes away from the crowd. 
The tank should also keep an eye on the undead towers when kiting and pop defensives during the fireball spell if you have too many stacks. Prior to starting the third boss, it is recommended to clear all the mobs within the room to avoid unnecessary confusion during the boss fight. The third boss of Xuanzhu Palace is a mage with a name too long for me to read. He starts off the fight by standing on this platform and proceeds to randomly teleport around the area in three set locations. The first skill that he does is Sound of Humility, spawning five rays of lasers at a target and can be easily dodged. Next, he will use the Dark Sound Explosion ability, randomly targeting raid members and spawning around six purple balls near them that explodes after a few seconds. After announcing declaration of the blah blah blah, he will summon a giant purple ball that you should pop defensive for to alleviate pressure off of your healers. Finally, religious workers will also spawn and target random raid members. Targeted members should run to the tank to help pulling and killing them faster. Honestly, there isn't much to talk about, as I believe this is the easiest boss of the raid. Dodge spells properly and get the ass close to the tank makes the fight super easy. Similar to the previous boss, it is also recommended to clear all the mobs within the area of Fei Shi. As you move around a lot in the fight, pulling additional mobs will almost always cause a wipe. Fei Shi is the fourth boss of Xuanzhu Palace and is more difficult compared to the previous bosses, offering multiple kill threats to the raid. Firstly, the tank must know the mechanics of Fei Shi's attacks, which is indicated by a small red circle. Although it is very easy to dodge his attacks, dodging it three times in a row will cause the boss to do a raid wiping AoE. But taking the hit three times in a row will also cause the tank to be stunned for 15 seconds. Therefore, tanks must get into the rhythm of dodging the hit twice, then tanking it once. The next spell, Shock Attack, is shown by a red arrow indicator, and all melee members should dodge this spell. Next is Thunderbolt. This skill knocks the tank away from the boss a melee DPS should get in and spread the damage with the tank in front of the boss. Angry Water Frenzy is an important skill to look out for. The red indicator will cover the whole screen and the boss will charge up an attack that sends everybody into the air. Every raid member must scatter before the launch to avoid multiple instances of damage upon landing. Pursuit of Water will randomly target two members of the raid and send them into the air. Other raid members should gather together and catch the lightning teammate to spread the fall damage. Therefore, it is also recommended that the ranged DPS and healers stay together during the fight to make the catch easier to do. Fei Chi will also do three instances of a circular attack to melee targets and should be dodged by avoiding the red circle. This applies to the tank as well. Last but not least, Fei Chi's Rippling Flood sends out a beautiful wave of energy with a set pattern. It can be dodged by quickly shifting forward before the fourth beam. This may take some practice. Overall, this boss is a lot more complicated for the raid compared to the previous bosses, especially for the tank who needs some time to get used to the rhythm of dodge twice and tank once. So if the tank in your group is struggling, give him some time to practice as this is no easy task. For melees, start your opener one second late compared to usual, as you may get one-shotted by the boss's first skill. For the rest, learning the timing of dodging, spreading, and catching will make this boss a breeze. Chang Li is surprisingly easy for the second last boss of the raid, as he offers no instant raid threatening damage. His normal attacks apply a bleeding debuff and do hurt the tank quite a bit, so the tank should keep an eye out for the timing to pop defensive spells. The first attack to look out for is his hook. The boss will always grab the player furthest away, causing a brief stun, then cast two axes at the target right away. The player grab should always use the free CC spell, shift sideways to avoid Chang Li casting the axes through the middle of the raid. Deadly Double Axis is self-explanatory. Although the Axis apply a dot on the players, it does not do too much damage in normal mode. Chang Li will also leap towards a random target and deal AoE damage. The damage scales up as you are further away, therefore it is important for ranged players to stay apart from each other. When the golden body of the boss gets low, he will call for his 4 guards. They give him a shield that reduces his damage taken. The mobs hit quite hard and should be dealt with ASAP. The most important skill to look out for in this fight is his Bloodthirsty Hunt. Chang Li will randomly select two non-tank members and summon Red Axes to follow them. The target players should kite the Axes away from the group to avoid unnecessary damage to the raid. The two things that may cause chaos in this fight are the Guards and the Red Axes. If your raid is having trouble with the Guards, you may choose to use two tanks, using the off tank for the mob summoned. Overall, dodge the Axes, kill the mobs, and Chang Li will be down in no time. At last, the final boss. Da Han's first skill to look out for is Scattershot of Demon Chi. 
which randomly deals damage and bounces between raid members. When the bounce happens, damage is quite significant, could be lethal as well, so make sure the entire raid group other than the tank scatter, both melee and range included. The boss then takes a lesson from Street Fighters and uses Whirling Kick, spinning towards a random player and dealing damage along the way. The damage could also be lethal if you are caught in too many instances. When caught, using your free CC skill here could be the difference between life and death. If you choose to do the fight with a single tank, Mighty Demon Punch is the most annoying spell. The boss charges the punch for around 5 seconds, then deals huge damage in the direction he is facing. The punch also applies an armor breaking debuff that makes the tank extremely vulnerable. The tank must use defensive spells every single time the spell is cast. When cooldowns are not up, the tank must communicate with healers for damage reduction, shield, or ice crypt from bard. Keep in mind, ice crypt only lasts 3 seconds and might run out before the hit happens. Healers must pay extra attention to the tank at this point as he can still easily die even after living from the mighty punch. Upon reaching 50% HP, the boss will jump into the middle and unleash his demon chi. This is where the class training from Berserker comes in handy. Dodge the boss summoned as they do a small explosion every time a unit is hit. Summoner pets could also cause the boss to explode here, so it is recommended to put them away. If you are hit by the boss once or twice, I recommend you popping defensives and or use elixirs to stay healthy as the boss will almost always follow this phase with a scatter shot. From this point forward, the boss's skills become stronger, including an all direction AoE. But overall, the skills are mechanically the same as before. You may choose to use two tanks in this fight to deal with the mighty punch. Switching tank between each punches will easily get you through this mechanic. However, when played right, one tank can get the job done. This boss is very tanky, and the rage timer is 8 minutes. The decision is yours on whether to do this fight with one or two tanks. One of the tip, your raid may choose to break the golden body of the boss after it goes into phase 2. This could make the fight easier. The mixture of scattershot, whirling kick, and unleash could often cause accidents in the fight. Therefore, don't be surprised if you're spending some extra attempts on the boss. After all, it is only natural for the final boss to be the hardest one. That's the end of the video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Please leave a like and a sub if my video has helped you. For now, happy soloing. Peace out.